All right, so hello, people of the VOD and people of YouTube. This is the beginning of the stream. Ta-da! Um, welcome for do more Doki Doki Literature Club. It has been a while. It is because I was changing jobs, and by changing jobs meant that I didn't have time for this as I was trying to get adjusted to my new job. Um, now that I am about three, four weeks in, I'm about four weeks into my new job. Um, everything's going well. Uh, I'm getting paid more, so I'm happier. Uh, it's more work, so I'm actually more tired. But it's okay, because I've had coffee and energy drinks. So this will be great. <laughs> Alright. Login? Root. I forgot how colorful this was. Of course, if you don't know much about Doki Doki Literature Club, this is not what the original looked like. This is a new thing with Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, or DDLC Plus. Um, so, if you're just coming back, uh, DDLC Plus is a newer, updated version of the originals, um, where you had uh just the game on <laughs> just the game on um steam which was free uh just the base game on steam which was free uh it didn't have all this so if um if you wanted to check out the base game without like all this added stuff um it, like i said it is free game on steam um just look up doki doki literature club uh, the plus version, though, has a lot of other things like side stories, files. This is going to be more important soon. Uh, the game files. Um, mail, which I don't really know what this is about, but I will get to this. I guess this is more of an after game thing from what I'm guessing. Uh, pictures, which you unlock, uh, which are pretty cool. Uh, if you ever miss your poems, the poems actually appear here, too. So if I accidentally click past a poem... I will probably come back to it and read it <laughs> because I'm nice. Um, there's also music. Um, you can actually set up your own playlist of music to play, which is pretty cool. Um, I think you unlock music as the game goes on. I'm not 100% sure. But settings are going to be like the music volume, sound volume, blah, 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 all this stuff. Data collected, though, is pretty interesting. That's new with this, is that the data collected basically means um, basically means that you have a certain percentage of the game done. Right now, I'm only 13% of the way through, which isn't which is not long at all. All right. So side stories are also new. Um, those are end of game things. So once we get through the entire base game, then we'll hit the side stories and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it also tells you what time it is down here at the bottom, which I thought was cool. Uh, it's literally like a little mini desktop. Um, so I also wanted to have like sort of a live un or unboxing of the actual game whenever it released. But my release date got pushed back to the 21st of September. So I won't be able to do such a thing um, until it actually actually gets released for me. Um, but anyway, I think I've stalled long enough to explain everything to give people time to get here. Um, so I will go ahead and start up. Um, we are not restarting the whole thing. Like I actually did start um, a run through of DDLC and it looked like the majority of people decided that we wanted to start with Yuri. So, and I 100% blame Yuri voice for that. Uh, if you're new to my stream and you don't know what Yuri voice is, you'll find out because we're getting into this. This game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed. Please note this. This is very serious. When was the last time I streamed? Like three months ago? <laughs> 
I think my chat might be delayed by a bit because I think there was an option um, somewhere in there. And I don't remember where. So there might be a delay. Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. All right, so uh, load game. So, uh, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, 719, so almost a full month. Um, actually, no, excuse me. Oh, almost a full month, it's freaking September, not, not August. So it's been over a month. <laughs> Uh, almost two months, yes. Alright, so I believe uh, this was the last one? Yeah, so... I'll be honest with you guys. I don't know what the fuck these are. Okay, so this is my base one. Uh, that's right, page two... Uh, you know what? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even remember. I'd have to actually go back and watch the video because I recorded it. I just haven't put it on YouTube yet. Um, I do not remember, but I think um, so. This one, this this file right here is my base file. This file is going to be what I branch off of because, as I did in my previous version of the game, I am going to um, do every girl. So every girl's going to get a chance. Yuri just happens to be first. Um, in fact, it might end up being just because I want to like remove your guys' opinion and everything. I think it's going to end up going Yuri, Natsuki, and then Sayori. Uh, because I want to end it with Sayori. Because Sayori's... Uh, I'm going to end each of the thing before the final day. So all of these are going to go up until the final day, and then I'm going to stop. So once I get to the last CG, uh, you guys will know what that means later on. But whenever I get to the last one, I'm going to pretty much abruptly stop, come back to this file right here, and then restart it again. Because I'm trying to do like a 100% complete run. Alright, so. No! God damn it. <laughs> I did not mean to do this. I'm so sorry. I meant to do this. Yes. Hint, you can use the skip button to fast forward through text you've already read. I already knew this. I don't know why it's here. So this begins, uh, I believe we're in the second day? Third day? I don't remember. But our protagonist's name is Shiro again. Because I had people ask me to do Shiro again. Because I still hate him so much. Um, so. I am going to quickly... Okay. Okay. I still can't see who's all in chat, by the way. So, for whatever reason, it will not let me see who's in chat. So, I don't know. I don't know who's here. You'd have to type something for me to notice. I hate this. I hate this. So I hate using this word so much. But senpai won't notice you unless you speak in chat. There you go. All right. Okay. Monica voice. Monica voice. Monica voice. Let's real quick get a sip of water. Let's get a sip of water and have half of it run down my freaking shirt. Blech. Okay. Hi again, Shiro. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Aha! It is the second day, I think. Hold on a second. No. Hold on a second. Wait a second. Not this one. Oh shit, you know what? I think what I was doing is page two is uh, Yuri. Page three is Natsuki, I think. 
and then page oh yeah 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 page four is the four day oh, okay 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 i saw what i did excuse me that was just monica practice <laughs> okay all right so we're going for yuri words yuri words yuri words yuri words all right vibrant uh incontrollable uh pfft. explode um variance graveyard um incongruent starscape fester um <laughs> sorry i just read chat depression god damn it that's fine misfortune god damn it i didn't mean that not her uh unrestrained passion god stop it you excitement no uh whirlwind universe mm. sense mm, sensation sensation yeah uh infinite effulgent um uh, vivacious defeat no memories no broken no wow this one's hard which one's the yuri word here Help! Which one's the Yuri word here? I'll wait. <laughs> Memories or raindrops? I'm thinking memories is a Sayori word. So, I'm thinking Memories is a Sayori word, because she has a lot to do with that. Raindrops might be it, but that also could be a Yuri word. Or, I mean, a uh, Sayori word. That's why I'm having a difficulty with this. Alright, so, let's order of elimination this shit. Kawaii is gonna be Natsuki. Poof is Natsuki. Silly is most likely Sayori. Pink is probably Natsuki. Fireworks is maybe Sayori. Um, Broken is 100% Sayori. Charm is possibly Natsuki. Fuck. Alright, we're gonna do raindrops and see if it works. Yes! Yes! Raindrops works! Thank you, Rita. I knew Sayori's word was probably memories. Alright. Another day passes, and it's time for this club meeting already. But that Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. Yep, that's right. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entertaining- er, entertaining. <laughs> Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Shiro! Oh my god, I forgot her voice. Yeah, no, and that's, that's pretty correct. Is Hi, Shiro! Because she's got like the little sing-songy bits in her voice, right? Hi, Shiro! Yo, Sayori! Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just... Bleh. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which... Oh, shit. Sorry. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, 
Sayuri nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then, she turns it upside down and let its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Detective Shiro on the case! So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. He's harsh. But there's one more thing. <laughs> this protagonist is way too smart to be Shiro. <laughs> This is true. This is 100% true. Uh, but there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves a one option. Ah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? Oops. <laughs> Zai bitch. Eh? From Shiro. Oh, goodness. God, I should not have named him Shiro. I should have named him something random that doesn't look like Sayori so I can pay attention to the fact that it doesn't say Sayori here. It says Shiro. Don't ask why I get them mixed up just based on that. I just look at the first letter and that's it. If there was no N, M, S, or Y, we would have been fantastic. But y'all wanted Shiro again. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Shiro to bo <laughs> Tell Shiro to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Oh god, here it comes. Here it comes. Uh, did I just... I, I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside of us all, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Pwap! <laughs> Pwap! I love this sound effect forever. Yeah! Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie? 
sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. It, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just going to give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> N Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Yes, Natsuki does have a fang. So good! Oof. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Nats uh, cookie's still in hand. Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuri's cookie. Or Natsuki. Natsuri. Pfft. Natsuki's cookie. H hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. I think I changed Natsuki's voice like 100%, but I can't tell because I can't listen to myself as I'm doing this. I mean, I could, but it would be weird. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. So... I would like you guys to note something. Just a little tidbit. Just like you to note somebody. Something. Uh, the music right now. What is it lacking? What does this music sound like it's lacking? Have fun. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. It's extremely hard to tell. Here, I'll turn it up for you guys. Just because I want you to notice. doesn't sound like there is so if you're musically inclined uh, what instrument specifically is missing here well if you know what the original song is obviously if you don't know what the original song is you're not gonna know but out of like, some of the more classical instruments, what doesn't, like, what's not here? Got some strings. 
definitely some guitar. Guitar. Yeah. Guitar. Here's a flute. Okay. I guess this was too hard of a question. <sighs> Specifically, what's missing here is piano. Piano is not present in this music. This song kind of this song sometimes has piano in it. So right now it doesn't have piano. And that's all that I'm going to give you. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? I think I changed her voice slightly. Let me re-roll that. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me! Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably had... She pro... Bleh. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I am super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club. I fucking thought she was Shiro. I don't know why. I just did. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend what on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense. That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. <laughs> I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Shiro. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, did... Bleh. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow ar Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. 
Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. <laughs> Natsuki in the closet. Oh my god. <sighs> Whatever. Hey, Yuri. Uh? Uh... I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention one for... Bleh. My brain. I can't read. I don't know who taught me, but I can't learn. Anyway. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, I'm gonna read this fucking line like three times already. Not tonight, but just in general. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the tea kettle bleh, sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Is it just me or is the music loud? Oh yeah, the music's louder than I had it. I had it under, like, the C. There we go. Sorry. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Uh... That's not even a why. I went Yuri immediately. That's not even a why. That's totally an S. Anyway. Uh. We're just... Yuri was gonna go make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling up the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I like sassy Yuri at the same time, but it's really hard to keep her quiet. Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you just want me to tell... Or do you just want to tell me there's something wrong with help... With, I hate this sentence. <sighs> or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Shiro in the club's activities? God damn it. I can't. This is such an awkwardly... This is such an awkward sentence for me. <sighs> Let me look at the history real quick. Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Shiro in club activities? Uh, uh? My mouth gapes. Gaps. Gapes. Gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Shiro. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. What? She told Monica off. I badly told Monica off. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. 
It made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Shiro, how come even when I do something bad, you're being so nice to me? Because nothing that you do is bad as you make it seem like in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh... N no wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Oh, why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What? <laughs> I seriously started that sentence with Yuri's voice. <sighs> what kind of a friend would do that? friend you say uh um yuri lifts her head shiro i really like it being friends with you uh, <laughs> thanks yuri i like being friends with you too i feel if i feel kind of awkward saying something like that but i'm doing my best to help yuri feel better anyway uh yeah Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walked to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Shiro, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Also, I will like to point this out of this being like a Japanese sort of setting that the kettle is 200 degrees. That is kind of strange. In a Japanese sort of setting where almost everything like on the posters in the background are in Japanese. Like that would it would be in Fahrenheit. That's it's weird, but it's not too strange, I guess. I just think it's kind of strange that it would be in Fahrenheit, not in Celsius. I don't. I know the person who made the game is American, but still. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? Yeah, 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 dude. So, this, I think I did the same rant on my old video. But, like, even if I wanted to serve tea with other people, like, if I was having guests over... And I was going to serve tea. This would only like be if I was going to serve tea in the first place. I would straight up pick a teapot out of my my cabinet and be like, "All right." Usually, I can tell how much tea a teapot holds. Uh, I think at one point I'd actually had a list of the teapots, and then um. I had a list of like my teapots like what how much water they held like I actually did a volume test like a volume list on them um so I would be able to be like all right so two teacups four teacups blah 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 so how many cups blah 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 of this teapot blah blah blah, blah. It's all of this in my math head I just said math head I did all this math in my head <laughs> uh or you know just guesstimating because I'm terrible at math so, uh, like, the teacups, because I actually have more teacups now than I ever really have before. Uh, thanks, Macy's, um, for providing me with teacups. Um, but I think that's one of the things that ended up happening, is that, like, if I was ever to have a guest, I would definitely be like, all right, if I'm going to serve tea, then yes, I am 100% 
going to have a teapot present. And it doesn't matter if the person is an expert on tea or anything. Definitely not. Because they don't care. They'll be like, ooh, fancy. Because that's like the reaction I go for. It's like, ooh, fancy. I wasn't going to serve you tea, Lan. Like, I don't have anywhere to actually serve people things. Like, where I live now, I have no room to serve people. No room. I literally have no room. Anyway. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. <laughs> you must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Shiro. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Shiro, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than being bent. I hate this sentence just because of... What's the word? Like partially innuendo here. I hate it. Just because it's Yuri. And I hate... <laughs> I really hate how much people love Yuri's voice. Ah! Okay. Yeah. I can read them with my... Bleh. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Uh, sorry. I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back... F bleh. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. Enough said. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. I love it though, how she's just like, uh, from my, my, and he's just like, your posture! And she's like, yes! That's exactly it! <laughs> Like, not even remotely, but she's just like, yes. <laughs> this will save me from more embarrassment. Ah, oh shit. I forgot about this. <laughs> I forgot about this part. I just dropped that. Oops. I'm gonna take another sip of my water and then hopefully... I was gentle this time. I didn't, like, try and gorge myself on my bottle of water this time. So my shirt came away clean. Well, not that it's anything more than just water, but still. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. <laughs> Sayori's candy radar. I take it. Since it'll go well with the tea, how do you know... I guess. He would have had to have tasted the, the tea by, by now. Yuri and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, 
Our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. <laughs> Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? This is such a high school boy thing. Like, I mean, I guess... Just touching is a trigger. Just, oh no, we're touching. <laughs> Physical contact, no, my greatest enemy. <laughs> Touching shoulders, it's practically marriage. <laughs> oh no. All right. Yuri was always kind of cute, but... Apparently, now that we're touching shoulders, she's even more adorable. <laughs> I can't. These people. Oh, no. When she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Oh, my God. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my tea. I thought the teacups were at their sides. Like it had literally just said this. Yeah. Teacups at our sides. W w w why is she handing me my teacup that is right next to me? Shut up, son. I am not the best streamer. <laughs> I am a very wild streamer. I don't make any sense. I am chaotic. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand. I literally can't understand this. Why would you hold your teacup and hold the book and also the candies come into play at some point? Like, the chocolates are there too, right? Oh no, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is such a nightmare positioning. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. <sighs> The main character has three arms. <laughs> like, I feel like I need an MS Paint version of what's going on, because clearly. Anyway. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. No, because your internal dilemma is yours alone. You octopus or you're you and your octopus arms, she's probably just like, I put my teacup down at my side. A whole book. I don't know what more you want from me. Especially because, okay, so if she's holding one side of the book and he's holding the other, and we'll assume, you know, she's holding the right hand side, he's holding the left hand side, with her right hand and his left hand. So I don't understand because if they're smushed together, and their opposite hands are holding the teacups. That is like literally the most uncomfortable thing in existence. Like. Let me. I'm trying to do a thing. No, that is not what I wanted to do. Alright, let me. Let me see. OBS window capture? <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> Excuse that. Uh, this. How about that? There we go. That'll work. Alright. So, we'll do main character in... in I, can't, I think he has brown hair. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's the main character. <laughs> Alright. This is Yuri. Who has longer hair. Uh, 
I don't know. Don't ask. <laughs> She's got her player, though. All right. So her hand is, like, right here. Holding book. Scribble, scribble, scribble. And his hand... Don't worry about their he their hands being attached to their heads, okay? Don't worry about that. And he's holding the book over here. <laughs> don't ask why his version of the book is bigger. <laughs> I don't make the rules, okay? And oh my god, they're touching. <gasps> Alright, so her teacup is like right here, right? Tea cup. That's on the wrong side. Tea cup. That's probably not even it. They're probably got like the other one types of teacups. And there's a teacup here. Y'all are gonna you're all probably making fun of my terrible I'm using a mouse, okay? There's not much I can do here. I don't know why I gave him more air. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, so like this doesn't even remotely make sense. Oh, also, I have to give her her most distinguishing figure. Okay. <laughs> no, not a giant three. There we go. And he's afraid of touching them. So, of course he would be. And they're also sitting down. So, like, anatomy's hard, right? But why would they... That doesn't make sense. This right here doesn't make sense. This? I don't understand. They said that their teacups were at their sides. So he has like a third arm. Come, no, that's purple. He has like a third arm over here with his teacup. Let's pretend he's holding it. So like, question mark? That's also purple. This is really bad. Like, y'all are probably laughing at me. But anyway, like, anatomy's weird, right? Like, I don't understand what's going on here. I also can't see chat, so... I'm happy that I can't see you at the moment because I'm just trying to do my best. But yeah, so like, what? I don't understand. Y meanwhile, Yuri has not noticed a thing, so she's like, confused. And he's just like, whoop, whoop, whoop. He doesn't know what he's doing. I don't know why I gave him a happy face. He's probably not happy. He's probably more like this. Just like M. He's dead. Alright, enough of this. We'll go back to game. Don't save. Why would I save that? <laughs> oh no! Oh no. <laughs> I'm now reading you guys because oh my god. <laughs> it's the third time. <gasps> ah! Dr. Zeus has book. <laughs> book. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. What am I here for? Okay, <laughs> he now has four arms. <laughs> Alright. Alright, back to game. Let me brush away the freaking tears from my eyes, because y'all are hilarious. I am barely hilarious. You guys are what make it cool. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. Uh, let me bring this back up so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. Dot, dot, dot. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. I put the teacup... Oh, no. <sighs> Fucking MS Paint. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. What the fuck is going on? He's holding the book with one hand. Oh no. Oh no. What am I missing? Oh no! I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <sighs> Thank
thing because I hate it. Uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. What, of the book? Oh, probably no, the chocolate. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. Galaxy brain over here. I didn't even think about it. Because I am not a galaxy brain. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Okay, okay, now she's taken over. So, she... <laughs> I hate you. Uh, she should... She has the book in both hands now. So she has bo the book in both hands. Now he's fiddling with the chocolate full time. So she's holding the book. So it's weird because she's probably holding the book in a way that is really awkward for her, I would think. Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't... <laughs> what did I just say? I don't even know what I just said. My mouth just kind of started going and it had no, no actual line. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then, I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. <gasps> she doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. There it is. There it is. It's right there. You can't see it because for whatever reason, my... Where's my mouse? Uh-oh. I fucked something up. Hold on. I fucked something up, didn't I? <gasps> no, my mouse is gone! Did my mouse vanish? Do you guys see- Oh, okay, you guys can still see my mouse because I can't see my mouse and I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. But yeah. Oh no, there it is. That's weird. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did did I just Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um Sh Shiro S Sorry, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh that's well you were just helping. That's something that friends do right I mean not really in this kind of context but yeah that's all it was yeah then you don't need to stop or anything uh, I I see this situation has gotten really tense <laughs> Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can just tell by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. 
how did it even come to this? Oh god. What's that one song? How did it end up like this? It was only a chocolate. It was only a chocolate. How did it come to this? I don't know. <sighs> Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling <laughs> to the rhythm of her breath. <laughs> I can't take any of this seriously. This is hilarious. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, <laughs> Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. <laughs> I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Man, I could not try to ever seriously read erotica. That's for sure. I can't. Like, I just can't. I can't seriously read something like this not allowed anyway oh. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I was literally just getting ready for the next bit of that and I completely forgot this happened <laughs> oh no oh my god I'm freaking gonna cry. This is too much. Hold on a second. I need to mute myself. I gotta wipe the tears out of my eyes. Okay. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Take a sip of some energy drink. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, everyone. What? Ah, Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Shiro, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I, I, I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Of course you will. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I share my poem with first? <sighs> you know... I don't really know who I want to share my poem with first. But it's not going to be Yuri. And it's not going to be Monica. So out of Sayori and Natsuki... Who should I have? Who should I share with? We haven't heard from, like, Sayori or Natsuki in a while. It has been a bit. It probably doesn't make a difference between Natsuki and Sayori, but I did choose some Sayori words on accident. So... One girl who hasn't gotten any attention is probably Natsuki, though. I'll go Natsuki, sure. She's probably going to tell me, turn me away immediately. Hmm. Well... I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see you're, that you're putting some effort. Blech. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. It's trying too hard to be serious. Uh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's gonna sound like you're just... 
It's gonna bleh. It's just gonna sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. <sighs> Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. It's a short joke, do you get it? Because she's tiny. D don't tell me! Eh? You're not... You're not trying to impress Yuri, are you? Wh what are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know, Yuri would love this kind of... This angsty... Just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I... I mean... Ooh! Looks like I'm in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve. Though... What did... I did is beyond me. I am so done with you. Natsuki shoved the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem, and if you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Ouch. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world full of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. So, we didn't even get to see a Natsuki poem because she realized that we were going after Yuri and she said, Whoa! No! No thanks! Goodbye! Alright, Sayori's next. Oh! I like this one, Shiro! It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, uh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. How much of a difference does this stuff make in the long run of this game? Long run? None of it matters. <laughs> long run none of it matters um it's basically just like right now like we're going down yuri's route so all of this is going to be pretty much yuri centric because i've chosen yuri uh the next girl i go through is going to be natsuki which is the red uh red which is the uh pink haired girl that we just saw and then this is Sayori. So Sayori is going to be the next person. Or the last person we go through. The story world. <laughs> when did we get the Saber's route? Um, so. Um, what this end up mean. What this right now means is that. Um, I probably have another about two or so hours of Yuri left. And then I move on to Natsuki. Um, and then Natsuki's probably going to be around three hours because I'm really slow reading these because I'm reading them with an audience and I am having interaction. Um, so Natsuki's, well, so I'm actually going to be skipping quite a bit. So, um, like a lot of the beginning stuff I'm going to be skipping. Um, pretty much if it doesn't have anything different, I'm probably going to skip it. So, we'll, we'll get to that whenever we get to that, though. But for right now, all of this is going to be based on Yuri. Um, so, all of their, they're going to be like, ooh, this was so angsty, or this was so serious sounding. And it's because I've chosen Yuri for this route. Um, if it's more like, oh, this sounds so kid-like, or this sounds so uh, kind of melancholy, those are the other girls. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important role, or pretty, bleh, pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. That's because I haven't cared. Yeah! Me neither! Uh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, uh, 
You want me to write? You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. <laughs> oh shit. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Melancholy? Bittersweet? Bittersweet! It was one of the two words. Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. <laughs> I hate this so much. See, this is one of the reasons why raindrops was iffy for me is because I was like, mmm, rain cloud, raindrops. That's kind of a Sayori word. And the me... Ha, blah, 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 blah. And make a happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Shiro. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh, shit. Bottles. I pop a... I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. That's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pick one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and the crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping, I dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends. They come in, in bleh. they come such in a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each other and every friend, to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Some intense stuff holy crap Sayori did you really write this of course I did I didn't didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever yeah but I mean I didn't expect something like this coming from you Monica taught me a whole lot and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not bleh. Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to being so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I think I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. 
It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's always had a bad habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it more, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I write my... <laughs> who should I write my poem? Who should I show my poem to next? Yuri! Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Shiro, this one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick this up? Blech. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to get, try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I, I'm not y used to this. Used to what? Uh, I, I don't know. It It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Y yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Uh-oh. Yuri does not respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway... Do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. <clears throat> it happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttling of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noted my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife, that very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlonian conditioning. I slice the bread and feed myself again. You don't say. Um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. Oh, I do! That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid... Viv Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, 
If I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think that... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes... Yeah. No, I was right. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Though I sometimes enjoy. I don't know why that sounds weird, but it is. It's fine, though. English is hard. Why do you keep them to yourself? But, but because they're in embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Shiro? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is ex Blech. the best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my After all, if I haven't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you, Shiro. That, that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just... A really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's... It's nothing, really. Dury smiles serenely at me. For just a moment, her timidness needs... Needs... Seems to disappear. Who should I share it to my poem to text? Monica! Hi again, Shiro. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. <laughs> I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. It feels like you're not that. Yeah, no, I was right. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one that I read. I won- Just wondering, have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. Can't You can't deny that she's talented. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... Romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I notice that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh? You, you completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of, oh. Excuse me, let's pop that back. Yeah. A fictional one, anyway. Here we go. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's really nothing... There's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. <laughs> Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. 
an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pre- bleh, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of the meaningless. Load me. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing you never really see before, seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the move of mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting that... Yeah. Sorry, I just punched the mic. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know what might change. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few distract distractions. That is not what she said. Brain, please. We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Uh, I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it. Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys? No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. I remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to a it's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Hmm. But... I still think we should give it our best. 
We are the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and put out bleh, and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings! Being intimate with yourself! <laughs> Being intimate with yourself. Mm. Sayori, come on now. I don't think so. <laughs> Finding new horizons and having fun! That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it... Bleh. And if it... And if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right! <sighs> Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I... I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, 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 no way! M Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Uh, uh, oh, oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> Monica be begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice feels... feels... She feels the room. She fills the room. More than that, her, infle her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression in her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thanks you th ah, thank you so much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri! Ooh. It is called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. 
This must be a rare glimpse into the whirlwind whirlwind. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality and glances around her as if she as if she is bewildered even by herself. Uh, I it's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me after and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. <laughs> it's not what we didn't it's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good! Thank you for sharing! Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> she's like, Alright, count to three, she's done. Okay! I guess I'm next, then! Sayori hops up out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori, it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? <laughs> Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I think she said, if it's your, it's your poem, it'll come out best that way. I see, I see! Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as such a perfect match. I really don't give her a soft voice, to be honest. I give her a very high-pitched energy voice. So... Eh, that's sad. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone. <laughs> oh, really? It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Shiro liked it! I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen some poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Shiro. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Shiro lower everyone's standards a little be before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's... It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I step up, or I step up, I stand up, and I step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki! Yeah, yeah. I'm going... Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... 
It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki, finish, uh, Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Well, well, you do at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people. I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you have much more... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez... I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the, for the, for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Shiro? Yep! Hold on. Let me reread that, because I'm pretty fucking sure I just completely got it wrong. Yep! <laughs> I did! Excuse me! Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Shiro, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. S sorry I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of a question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> would I walk home with Yuri, or would I still walk home with Sayori? Hmm... Would I be an asshole, or would I be nice? Hmm... I don't know! I don't know how nice the, min the main character is. He's not very nice. 
I've never noticed him to be nice anyway. I really don't know. Hmm. He would be nice. <sighs> I guess. I would still... Uh... So this is the mean option, and this is the nice option. Do we want to just go with the mean option just because? Because, I mean, I'm not in, like... I'm not in the Sayori route. So should I just go with the mean option? Because, you know, I'm in the Yuri route. Like, should I do that? Hmm? Boop, boop, boop. Where's my cricket sound effect? I trusted you guys. No, it's fine. Um, I mean, I could be mean. That's true. I could be nice. Hmm. Excuse me while I look at my messages. Okay. Um You know what? I'm just gonna go full Yuri route. We're just gonna go full Yuri route because I'll get to Sayori whenever we get to Sayori. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down. So Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori. I can't figure out how you're seeing things through your head right now. Or, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a rep... No, sorry, I'm, I'm dumb. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me in such a weird question. I just can't lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Poem time! Alright, we will save. And right there. Alright. Analysis. Vertigo... Uh, vitality, anxiety, uncontrollable, judgment, uh, pff, frightening, philosophy, portrait, effulgent, despise, uh, incapable, um, vibrant, crimson, starscape, entropy, existence, Misery. Whoops, wrong person. Uh, n -n 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 -n. Uncanny? Yeah. Um, unstable. Aw, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing the piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. 
And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Aha! I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Eh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a little bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Uh, I didn't say... I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you, of all people? Because it's right in your name, Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Hmm? Question mark? Wait, what? Ah, <laughs> never mind. Let's focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? Uh? You're spacing out again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of, of course! Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if, she ne if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival... They must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Shiro, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticing have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh? You think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging her rubber eraser up and down her desk. Hmm, maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Shiro. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Shiro. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know. Uh... She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. 
It's like an extra light was turned on inside her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Shiro. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is whenever she's around you? <laughs> I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she's... Oops, sorry. I know she said to forget about it. But I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. Excuse me for two seconds. There we go. I watch her kneel down. Oh, sorry. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from her. I can't. Bleh. Can't hear from. Sorry. Just gonna bow my head in shame because I can't read. Anyway. Uh, but she. <laughs> but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. <sighs> I don't know why my brain had so much hard time with that. I sigh and sit down myself. <laughs> sit down myself. That would make more sense, but no. No, of course. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her, and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do whenever she's behaving like this. Exactly how much I... Exactly how much do I care about her, that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the only one behaving out of ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere, that she won't get anywhere like this. I never really seen Yuri approach anybody or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her own. Alright, here we go. I, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. B but uh, I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you able how were you even able to tell what I was thinking like that? Uh, well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was staring or anything. I, I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course they're a... Brain, please. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just beginning... I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, that's quite romantic. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. 
Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little bit too much. Shiro. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Uh, so you think there might be something behind it after all? Hmm. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends is all. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves, and you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Th that's... that's... I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feel. I'm a pretty simple guy. Oh, jeez. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, uh... That's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Man, I wasn't paying I wasn't paying attention to chat. Good night. You're probably not still here, but good night. You are still here. Have a good night. <laughs> Actually, this is a good chance to stop. Hello. I have a few new people here and then I have <laughs> So we have one person leaving, one person joined, and now that I'm actually able to look at my people, I have a few people here. And a lot of messages. Why? I hate you all. No, I'm kidding. I love you all. Sorry, just some interesting things going on in the world. All right, let's go back to it. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Who should I share my poem to first? Alright, so I am just going to go ahead and get it out of the way. Do Sayori first. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on. I can already tell you don't like it. Well... You 
don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Uh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. May maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Shiro. Sayori. Is there something wrong? Huh? Uh, no, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. Just tell me if you need anything. I, I will. Don't, don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Alright, Natsuki. Yeah, no thanks. Eh... You didn't even... Next! <laughs> Who should I show my poem to next? <laughs> Yuri. Shiro, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you've shown me has, nothing sh has been nothing short of spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to per- That- Hold on. I don't- Okay, I read that and I completely spaced out that I read this. I don't ever think it came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me. But I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Uh, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling... I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. That's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Aww, sad music. Yuri smiles sadly. Shiro, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing, inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at that way, when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know. And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I am not a know-it-all, Shiro. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I, I, I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I, 
have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Shiro. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you always treated me like everyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But it's always... Bleh. It's why... Bleh. <laughs> I fucking can't. <sighs> But that's why, every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would have, I would say that I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um... If you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her, f Yuri puts her head in her hands. Oh no! <laughs> but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want me to show? <laughs> do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. All right. Ghost Under the Light, Part 2 The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow Bathing, in the distance, a blue-green light flickers A lone figure crosses its path A silhouette obstructing the eerie glow My heart pounds, the silhouette grows Closer, closer I open my umbrella, casting a shadow to shield me from visibility But I am too late he steps into the streetlight. I gasp and drop my umbrella. The light flickers. My heart pounds. He raises his arm. Time stops. The only indication of movement is the amber light flickering against his outstretched arm. The flickering light is in rhythm with the pounding of my heart, teasing me from succumbing to its forbidden emotion. Oh no, sorry. Teasing me for succumbing to a, this forbidden emotion. Have you ever heard of a ghost feeling warmth before? Giving up on understanding, I laugh. Understanding is overrated. I touch his hand. The flickering stops. Ghosts are blue-green. My heart is amber. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri, but instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Do you dislike it? Uh, no, of course not. I just, I don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poem be... Bleh. Despite Yuri's poem usual, poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. <laughs> I I don't know if I'll be able to explain this one. That's fine. I understand this one. <laughs> He's just like, yep, yep. You were just blatant enough for me to get it. Blatantly obvious. I got it. 100%. <laughs> it took him that long. He's like, ah, I don't really get these these other poems you do. But this one, this one. Yep. All you had to do was say his, and I got it. He, pfft, big braining this. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. Does this one mean a lot to you? Yuri nods. I'm not really good with words, but I'm happy that you shared it with me. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. Despite my inability to make eye contact, I see a faint smile emerge on Yuri's lips. There's her smile. There's her smile. She's a little faint smile. 
I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead, Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back towards me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. You can... Um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Again, Yuri faintly smiles as she doesn't want me to notice. You always... You always make me feel nice. I know I'm not good with people, but I hope that I can return the favor sometimes. Yeah, don't worry. I think you do a good job. Yuri finally turns back toward me. I... Oh, whoops. I guess we should move on before Monica says something. But I'm sure we can talk again later. Yeah, I'm sure we will. With that, Yuri timidly smiles at me and I return to my seat so I can put her poem away. Who should I share my poem to next? Monica! Hi, Shiro. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? I said that really weirdly, but that's fine. Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. I... It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Your style's gotten so refined, Shiro. Yuri's been teaching you a lot of things, hasn't she? Well, I guess so. Yeah, I've been noticing how much time you spend with her. I think I've heard her say more words these past couple of days than she's talked the whole year. Not sure how you did it, but that's pretty impressive. Well, she just needs some patience and a way to talk about all the things in her head, I guess. I'm still getting the hang of it myself. Hmm, you're certainly putting in a lot of effort. You must really like her. Uh, that's... <laughs> it's awfully suspicious, you know. Spending time with her in the club room every day. Reading that edgy novel with her. Well, I just feel bad that she has a hard time socializing. It makes me want to make sure <laughs> they're all a mood, except Monica. <laughs> Monica is moodless. To catch people up who are either uh, watching... Well, no, the VOD actually has the chat. But the people on YouTube are going to watch this. So, someone was like, Yuri is a mood. And then I got another person who's like, yeah, they're all a mood. And which is true. All of them are a mood. Except for Monica. Monica doesn't really... You can't really... Well, not yet anyway. <laughs> Monica's not too in-depth at the moment. That'll change. Don't worry, that'll change. It makes me want to make sure that she doesn't spend all her time alone. Besides, the novel isn't too bad either, you know. Alright, alright, I get you. Just be careful, alright? I know that Yuri isn't used to opening herself up. So if something bad happens while she's vulnerable, then it could be really hard for her. Her books aren't a total escape from reality. They're just a bandage. You say that like I'm going to hurt her. Sorry, I didn't really mean that. If anything, she might accidentally hurt herself. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. Alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift in the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glittering in the twilit sky. In the twilit sky. Until one day, 
The wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather. And a dry quill, expressionless, but a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know... I feel like learning and looking for answers that are so, that are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of in my mind. Sorry, but it was kind of on my mind. So that's what I had. That's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, that. Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your own writing because you're afraid that it's not good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my writing advice for today. That is not what she said. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Uh, something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ugh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off while she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times not to go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh, that curious explosion coming from... Why is this italicized and in quotes? Is he saying this out loud? Why is this in quotes? He wouldn't be saying this out loud. Oh, whatever, I'll treat it as if it's out loud. That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. Nope, they didn't react to it, so... I talked to her... I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? 
Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so it completely fucking ignored. Let's decide what everyone will be working on this weekend. What? That's not what I said. Let's decide what every everybody will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need... First of all, nobody gonna mention where my mouse is? I just see where it is. I'm gonna move that. Just get that out of there. But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all, your, all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Mm, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, Yuri, you know? N now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez. Even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have a you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. A atmosphere? Um about that. I I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. No! You have to die in Final Fantasy XIV. This is completely off. I'm just reading chat, okay? I don't ignore you guys. You, ha you have to die. Like, that is just a part of life. Death is a part of life. In Final Fantasy XIV. It's just a part of life. You have to die. Everybody dies. Sorry. Um, go away. There we go. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. Anyway, that just leaves you, Shiro. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out, too. As... Nah, blah, 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 blah. Nah. <laughs> Uh, you can always help me out, as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond... How are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you, give to you. It's not like Monica's gonna, gonna, be, gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Shiro may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So, therefore... He may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on. I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Shiro to... W what are you saying? It will be extremely... Bleh. It will be a mis... I fucking can't talk. It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? 
Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Shiro to decide how he'd handle, sorry, how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in, you literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry, I'm just saying though. Jeez, can we settle this already? Yeah, Shiro, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... So, in this case, you literally only have Natsuki or Yuri. Monica and Sayori, spoiler alert, are out. Not options. So, since I'm going straight Yuri route, we're just going to immediately go into Yuri. Uh, these two options, I would be... I will probably end up doing on Sayori's route. Uh, because it's kind of funny to listen to Monica's... Or if you choose Monica, it's kind of funny to listen to. And if you choose Sayori, it's kind of funny to listen to. Mm, whatever. But anyway, Yuri it is. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. M me? Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying... Ugh! So, you'll be helping out Yuri then, Shiro? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to get needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Shiro? Me? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm interested in see to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki? What? Why is everybody yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! N no that's not what I meant at all. Uh... Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. Uh, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Shiro picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really... They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. W why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. Uh, no. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. I'm, but I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that... There's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Uh, 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 Alright, let's get out of here then. I, I fucked up Natsuki's voice, but I don't care. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Na Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Uh, um, 
Uh, I turn around. S sorry, I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? Getting them digits? I, I think that would be the best way, yes. All right, then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? I, I, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. All right. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. Which it is not. I hope to manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Shiro. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. W wait you don't actually think that, do you? Eh... I... I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. B but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely intense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Now is the time. You were overthinking. Uh, I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She's got that thinking cap on. She's like, hmm. Instead of like the equations going on in her head, she's just like, light bulb. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I swear, these people in eye contact. I can't stand eye contact. I hate it. Blech. Eye contact. Blech. Just hate it. Don't ask me why. I just hate it. I don't like it. Eye contact? No. Nope. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort. Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof! Even though I'm pretty, I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what it might end up happening when we're outside of school. There's more than that. She told me that she was looking forward to it. This is the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or no, that's a question. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. Fade to black. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There is no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Ooh, he wants her to open up. Mm. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But pure, but putting Yuri aside, we're just going to pick her up and put her aside. I haven't heard anything from Sayori since she left club earlier, early the other day. It's not like we text each other at all, all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said... Is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decided to vi I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. 
Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her room where I finally find her. Sayori! Hi, Shiro! I sit down in her room. Look at the cow! Moo! I love the cow. The cow's so cute. This bird's creepy as shit, though. He's got that freaking eyeball just staring at you. The cow? Dead eyes. There's nothing there. No lights on. But that bird? He's shifty as fuck. I sit down in her room. First of all, can we notice her calendar over here? It's like, these three days are circled. I can't really tell what's going on here. That day is circled. Can't tell what's going on here. Can't tell what's going on here. Can't tell what's going on there. No, circled day here. Nothing there. Can't tell what's here. This whole month is fucked. And then this month is fine. Like, I don't know what's going on over here. And then this is torn. This is kind of weird. I don't know. But otherwise, it's not that bad. The plants are kind of sad looking. They're kind of eh. Not perky plants, that's for sure. Hmm, I don't know. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Wall decorations? There's literally only one thing on the walls. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you wanted to come over today? Or, how come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sarah had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep! There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing, after you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Shiro. Uh, why can't it be just like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake... Then you wouldn't have to be <laughs> you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Shiro. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. 
seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Shiro? I, I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I am in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just not to think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. This is what you should not say to somebody who does this to you. If somebody opens up to you, you do not do this. Do not be the MC at all. The, the main character is an asshole. <laughs> Just straight up. Do not do this. Like, if someone opens up to you like this, don't say anything about being betrayed or being hurt. Like, it's none of your fucking business. Your feelings don't matter. <laughs> Anyway. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Yeah, you would do that, but you would say nothing about being betrayed. You would just support them. <laughs> Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. Oh, God. Lord help her. All you had to do was tell me. Don't stress people like that either. Don't put that on them. Don't be like, hey, if you did this, then this would have happened. That, that doesn't make anything better. Never do that. All that stuff, don't ever do. Everything that Shira was saying here, don't ever do it. Because it's rude. <laughs> You don't understand at all, Shiro. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everybody else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and getting closer with everybody in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Everything, or every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't under oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh sorry. Was... Woo. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand oh fuck. Fuck off. <laughs> Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Shiro. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could help, could have helped is if everything could have been like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streak down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here, and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. 
because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, uh, Shiro. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Shiro. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Shiro, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want, it f want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. Don't do this. Don't play a hero. Doesn't work out for you. Does not work out for you. Never play hero. Never works out for you. I'll make these feelings go away. Nope. Won't happen. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. Nope. Don't ever do this either. Don't tell them that they better tell you anything because they don't need to tell you anything. If you have anybody who's going through this shit, don't ever be like this. Don't be selfish like this because they, pfft, they do not need it. They're already going through some terrible stuff. I'll get mad if you, definitely don't say this. Definitely don't say this. Yeah, Sayori knows that that was bad call for him too. Sorry, excuse me, my nose is leaking. Because I'm getting emotional. I'm getting into the voice acting. I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally push, puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Shiro. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But... Your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. And as she does, as she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh. It's what I want. I promise. I I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry about it too much. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. <sighs> I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. <sighs> Sorry. I just... 
I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri. Uh. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I need to emotionally step away from this for a few seconds. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right. Hold on. Let me grab the tissues. Also notice that one of my cats has been in here the entire time and she said nothing to me. Oh, now you're going to talk to me. Hi. Do you want to talk to people? Do you want to talk to people? Do you want to talk to people? That's my girl. Oh, this is my girl. I need my my serotonin boost. This is my girl. Hi. You want to talk? This is my girl. I know you don't like being held because you're a fat girl. Okay, let me let her out. Go on. Okay. Serotonin boost. Woo! Alright. Oh, man. Woo! <sighs> All right. The serotonin boost is, is good. All right. Should be better now. All right. Okay. Where were we? Maybe. Hold on. I'm still trying to figure that out. Woo! All right. Okay. Yuri voice back. Yuri voice back. I need Yuri voice back. Whew. All right. Whoops. I fucked something up. I am so sorry. What did I do? There we go. Nope. What did I do? Stop it. There we go. Whew. Okay. Click back on the window. I accidentally skipped that. Okay. Yuri. Ah. Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? N no, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You could always could have texted me. If I'd have known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Uh-huh. I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no, it would be really embarrassing for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh... That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look at there! 
I snatch Yuri's wrist, which in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. <laughs> it wasn't that bad! It wasn't that bad. I mean, maybe for you, but it wasn't that bad for me. Uh... I'm... I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrists. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. I, I have a few things planned that you could help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help make our, take our... Bleh. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although may... Hmm. Although many will just... Brain. Why? Why are you like this? Why? Although many will stop by just out of curiosity, and for cupcakes, I guess, I am determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah. No need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh, yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wood, wooden cylinder shaped oh a wooden cylinder shaped object. Hmm. Curious. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have all these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contribu- It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a, pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through the small hole on top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I choose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and help you feel them through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that'll be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, enjoy clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of a thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper like I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami, what I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh, yeah? What will those be used for? 
Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper to the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. See, this in my head doesn't make much sense. It's cool in theory, but doesn't really make much sense, especially if you need a hundred of them. Like, <laughs> that's a lot. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. What would really catch the eye is if they were reflective instead of just origami paper. Like, if they were, like, actually, like, metallic paper, that'd be cool. But origami paper, like the plain matte paper, nah, not interesting enough. Or if they were bright neon, that would make sense. But otherwise, eh, I don't know. I can't see the paper because I don't ever show you. It would also catch the, catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some people to... Some, some people. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Uh, it, is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Shiro. You can write any characters you want. See, this is why it throws me off when we have Americanized things and then they suddenly switch to like Japanese sort of things. Like characters, Japanese. That would make sense. If it's a hundred of those. Because they can actually just put words. Or uh, put like whole words on little things with just a character. It'll... Yeah. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? <laughs> yes, you did miss uh, me talking about my drawings. I am super sorry. That was a while ago. The knife is strangely beautiful. Hmm. hmm. Sorry, I just noticed something was going on and I am unsure what to do about it. Hmm. I don't know what I should do about this. Sorry, I'm kind of new to actually looking at the actual manager for stream. So I just noticed like a whole bunch of fucking people with brand new accounts and I don't know what to do with them. So, oh, that shows up in chat. Well, <laughs> why does it show up in chat? <laughs> well, um, I think so. I don't know why. I'm not that big of a freaking streamer, but... Oh, ban this one. Oh, I already banned that one. Uh, banned this one. There's a lot, by the way. Okay, that one's banned. This one, banned that one. They haven't said anything, which is good. 
Because I'm assuming that would be make everything worse. But they've just been spam following me, and I'm just like, yeah, that's kind of weird. I think I found the main one. I don't know if that's it, though. Nope. Hold on. Maybe? I think so. I think that's it. This is not a conducive style of way of doing this. Oh, nope, nope. I did that one. Yep. That one is good. That one is good. That one is good. This one is good. This one is good. This one is good. Okay, yeah. There we go. Okay, yeah, there you go. Well, I took care of them. So I think that's it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There were nine of them. Fun. Um, for those of you that missed it, uh, I for the I have really been paying attention, but they, there's an there's an uh a Twitch. Uh, activity feed that I have up wow nine followers all of a sudden um but I just popped it up well I mean it didn't just pop it up but I actually looked at it and I was like ah this is the same name with slight variations and uh yeah so I just banned them because why not I didn't know it shows up in chat though which is funny um <laughs> I think that's a setting to turn that off, but I don't know, so. Okay, so let's get back to this. Okay, I wasn't paying attention, so let me get back to this. I did not press that. Okay. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is a gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. That, it looks really fancy. Uh, uh... Well, Yuri, em embarrassed, Yuri looks away. Oh, what is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? Oh, okay. I'm glad, okay, so, that, okay, it doesn't show up in normal chat. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. I'm happy about that then. Because for me, it looked like I was just spamming chat with bands. And I'm like, oh, this is weird and awkward. I didn't mean to do this to chat. But, you know, I'm glad it doesn't actually look that way on your end. That, that, that makes me a little bit happier. Yeah, no, you, if you have this little, little nice sword next to your name you're a mod so you can see everything that I do I guess or any like I can see anything that you guys do so it'd be either or anyway to each their own you know if you promise you won't be weirded out yeah I promise all right the thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I, I can't help it. I, I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Ooh, what am I saying? Please, don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> you're... you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. I just... 
It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. S suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's really, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It, it, it is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. W would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness. Idiot. I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Sh Shiro! Why, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. Uh, it, it's my fault. I, I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off right now. Uh, ah! Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, p p please forgive me. I, I, I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Y Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Uh, how could I do something like that? I I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, sure it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was trying to help, right? Y Yuri, I I think you're overreacting a little. Uh. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> oh no! First of all, if, <laughs> if you ever have the feeling of this might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway, you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. I'm not sure I'm mentally prepared for this shit. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Alright. This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri... <laughs> I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. <laughs> I fucking can't. <laughs> I am so sorry. I just can't. I can't. Like, who? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God, I can't. Mm-mm. Oh, no. <sighs> okay. I take Yuri's hand and I lick her index finger in return. Sh Shiro! Uh, did you really just do that? D now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. <laughs> He's just verbalizing it, saying, I knew that would be... He laughs first, which is even better. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. Oh. <laughs> 
You're so weird, Shiro. You're a <laughs> Yuri giggles. <laughs> Yuri <laughs> giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the lib- Bleh. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, <laughs> we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. She's been hitting up that Pinterest. Surely. Surely she's been hitting up Pinterest. She's like, ah! Cute atmosphere ideas. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri asked me to was to buy a asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put in to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. It's weird for somebody to say, I'll be I'll be right back in a minute. Usually it's just, I'll be back, or be back in a minute, you know? They usually sort in that. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come, into, I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly, hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise and daytime, then sunset and nighttime. So, just a side note. Try and remember this, what she's saying. Just, just try and remember this exact phrase because uh it's important later on but way later on you're not going to need to know that anytime soon but just kind of snapshot this in your brain and be like hmm yuri colors for sunrise daytime sunset day nighttime cool got it yuri likes that <laughs> once it dries once it dries I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yep, it will surprise me. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with water watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah. That's the wrong voice. Ah. I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean like that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. 
Yeah, it, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to... Sorry, I needed to burp. Anyway, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. Nope, she does crazy things at home. In fact, I don't usually even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. Yeah! She doesn't need to talk much. She just needs somebody to be next to her. That's it. A whole day. Nothing but her next to you. She's such a stay-at-home girl. She just wants to hang out. They don't need words. No words needed. Just sit there. Don't say a word for an entire day. Maybe an entire weekend. Who knows? I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you would understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Yeah! S sorry Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? N no, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have I should have asked you to get it for me. No, it's not your fault. Uh, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. S sorry, it's totally my fault. Oh, sorry. That was not her voice at all. <laughs> that was not her voice at all. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. No. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But suddenly, Yuri holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Uh? Just... For a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from the when she reads her books. Almost as if she lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri, Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It, It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. 
Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. I ran out of breath. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Why did I press that again? Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's any more for us to do here. Whew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. I w was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoped we would have some extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself, uh, I, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is not this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri perks... I said perks? Ah! Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you so much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. W wait I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over and we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Shiro. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Whoa! You don't say she took a step closer to you. Wasn't expecting this. What happened to the music? Is there music? There is not music. Okay. Just turn that right back down. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond that to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S sayori Eh? Uh -huh. Hi, Shiro! S sayori Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Shiro. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um... Well, it, it's nice to see you. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad! I I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sayuri beams. Y yes, yeah, so... Uh, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh -huh. Well, I I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know. 
how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Shiro? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart's splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Shiro. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori... What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I am going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Shiro. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and I started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Shiro, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I will always know what's best for you? Fuck off. <laughs> you do not say this to somebody who's sad. Uh, I actually am stopping right before the choice that's about to happen. I'm stopping right before the choice that's about to happen because I'm going to, um, start up Natsuki because, uh, I don't want to, like, from this, from that choice on is pretty much just going to be Sayori's day. Like, Sayori's stuff is going to be there. So, all of this that's happening right now, like, it's immediately... I'm not going to go in much further. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of my... all of your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now. Fuck off. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to give to you. Nope. That's... Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. We're gonna save this, but guess what? It's getting saved all the way the fuck over here. It's getting saved right here. No, 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 no. We're not going any further. This, not happening yet. Alright, so. I hope you enjoyed Yuri's route. Yuri's route is officially ended. So, the next person who I do um, is actually going to be Natsuki. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, actually, you know what I did? I think I actually... That's what this is. I believe what I ended up doing was I had already done... Um, I had already done the prep work for this. So, I think this is Natsuki and I think this is Sayori. Not sure. I wish I could name these. Because if I could name these, it'd make my life so much easier. So, we're just gonna do this. Loading will use... You will lose unsaved progress. Are you sure about that? Actually, you know what? We're gonna exit DDLC. And return to the desktop real quick. Alright, so look. I have side stories available now. That's cool. Ooh, that's cool. We don't care about this right now, though. What I do care about... 
Uh, see, this is this is Sayori's room. So there's like papers on the floor, complete with some amusing stuffed animals from her childhood. Okay, cool. That's cool. Uh, go back. Um. Ooh, got concept art of Yuri. Mm. Okay, nothing interesting. Um, music. Ooh, we got new music? Oh, I don't know what's new, though. I don't know what that is, but that's okay. Uh, settings. All right, so data collect 22%. That's the most important thing. I don't have it, like... I don't have it to where I can actually watch it yet. But anyway, yeah, so th at the beginning of the stream, it was at 13%. Now it's at 22%. So that just tells you how far we've come um, that a whole route is. But um, I'm going to look at the files real quick. Cool. Nothing's changed. Got it. All right. So I'm going to look, uh, I'm going to go back, load TDLC back up. Do, 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 Dookie, dookie. All right. So we're going to load game. Uh, we're going to do this one. All right. So I'm not going to do a lot of this dialogue anymore. So I'm just going to kind of skip through a lot of it. Um, so sorry if you haven't seen this before. Uh, I've already kind of done this. So we're just going to skip all this. So all this we've seen. Oh, shit, no. Okay, hold on. What? Excuse me. Excuse the hell out of me. I haven't seen any of that. Because I did Yuri's route. Wait a second. The fuck? So whenever they introduce the skip button, the skip button basically goes through. Goes through dialogue you haven't seen. It, like it stops whenever you hit, hit dialogue you haven't seen before. And I am 100% sure I have not seen that before because we went down Yuri's route. So, hey, but guess what? Uh, that just told me that this is Sayori's route, so we want to ignore that one anyway. <laughs> so, three is Sayori. So, three is Sayori's route. Four is Natsuki's route. So, yep, we're going to load this one. So, hi again, Shiro. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Um, so, we're just going to kind of skip through this. Obviously... I don't know why it didn't. Yeah, so we've already done all this. Just skip through this. Hold on a second. What the fuck? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right, history. Uh, meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Okay, so yeah, everything before this sentence right down here, I've already seen. I've already talked about it. You'll see it in a another video because I'm going to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to actually upload the other videos to YouTube, which is fine. But anyway, so meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. So we're going to do the first day of Natsuki, and then I'm going to call it a night because I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's crazy because it did actually skip dialogue that I haven't seen before. So I'm going to have to be careful with the skip button. Yeah, skip un- <gasps> I have skip unseen text. Hold on, what the fuck? That's fully my fault. I didn't know I had skip unseen text. 
God damn it. Welp! I know that now. <laughs> and I know which one I don't need to do. Alright, so, you know, there we go. I fix that problem. No return. Ugh! I hear Natsuki utter an exasperated sigh from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. Because she's short, and of course she needs a hand. That, uh, that's already where this is going. I already know. I'm not dumb. You looking for... S no, fucking hell, that's not even her voice. Um, that's, that setting is there, um, for a very specific part in the, in the actual game, which, uh, yeah, you pretty much need to have that setting there. So I didn't realize that I had it preset, which I didn't think was a thing. Like, see how it skips not even an option here? Like, skips not even an option here. Which is really nice, because I, if I accidentally skipped all this, I'd probably be like, ugh, and I'd have to restart the load. Uh, yeah, you're correct. That's exactly what it's for. You looking for something in there? Freaking Monica! She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is just gonna mess it up? Natsuki slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Uh, sometimes. Manga is one of those f those things where you can't admit you're really into until you figure out where the other person stands. Like a lot of things. Like furry. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How did you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written on your face. What's that supposed to mean? I... I see. There's a lone volume of manga amidst the stack of various books on the side of the shelves. I will interchangeably say manga and manga just to let you know. Do not correct me, because I'm dumb. <laughs> so I will never correct myself. So it's manga, manga, interchangeably. Just know that for right up front because there is a lot of mention of it here. Curious, I pull it out of the stack. There it is! N Natsuki snatches it out of my hand. She then turns it, turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better! Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the world. I know that feel. I get a closer look at the box set she's admiring. Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either out of my demographic or it's simply terrible. If you're gonna judge, you can go through the... <laughs> if you're gonna judge, you can do it through the glass on that door. She points to the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was... It was the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Shiro. Consider this a lesson straight from the literature club. Don't judge a book by its cover. In fact, Natsuki pulls out the first volume of Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right into my hands. Uh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moe, which I think it means cute. I don't know. Don't just stand there. What? Natsuki grabs my arm and pulls me out of the closet. She then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats on the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. We can't read at the same time like that. Eh? Why is that? Nah. I guess it is easier to be close together like this. T don't just say that! You'll make me feel weird about it! 
Natsuki crosses her arm and scooches, scooches, scooches an inch away from me. S sorry, I didn't exactly expect to be sitting this close to her either. Not that I can say it's particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I won't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder, much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every now and then? Not really. Maybe sometimes after I've already finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh, I am, but nothing's really happening yet, so... I can talk at the same time. It looks like it's about a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. The type of animes I will never watch. I hate slice of life stuff. Because it's dumb. I kind of grew out of these since it's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to make up for the lack of plot. Clap, 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 clap. This is exactly the reason why I can't stand slice of life things. Is because it's freaking boring. So, what should I expect from this? Is there going to be plot? <laughs> that would be my question, too. Well, obviously. You think I would enjoy something that didn't have a plot? I mean, well, I guess I, I know what you're saying. A lot of the beginning is about simple things. Like, there's a really funny chapter where they're obsessed with a guy at the ice cream shop. But that just helps you get to know the characters. And besides, it's still entertaining. Like, okay, so way back, this is going to be a tangent, but way back, like, during, like, Adult Swim, where, like, there were animes on Adult Swim that, like, were following stuff uh, that was currently coming out. Like, uh, ad manga, uh, anime adaptations of manga, uh, like... That were still being done. Like every weekly in Shonen Jump and blah blah blah. Filler episodes killed the fuck out of stuff for me. I absolutely hated Naruto fillers. Like I could not stand them. Naruto fillers killed everything for me. Like I stopped watching because it was just like there's too many fillers. And I will absolutely never get into One Piece. Fuck that show. I know it has way too many episodes. And it's what, like, there's too much filler and everything. I can't stand it. Like, there are certain shows where the filler is okay. Like, uh, the closest example I can say is, like, Bleach. Because, you know, Bleach was still coming out. And actually, there was, like, long gaps of, like, content droughts with Bleach. So the anime was just kind of, like, making stuff up as they go. Which is just what happens. Um... But, so, with Bleach, like, there were some cute, like, episodes and stuff, and there were, like, whole arcs, and I, m I missed out on some of the arcs, and, like, because I was just like, I don't fucking care, because it sounds stupid. Like, there were some arcs in that show, that, that series, that I was just like, ah, it's stupid, but if it, you know, had something to do with main overarching plot, then, you know, I was kind of, like, interested in it. Like, I think the only time where I legitimately liked it was if it was like just a one episode thing yeah so if it was like a one episode thing i was more willing to accept it but if it was like a whole arc of filler fuck it not watching it it's like tell me whenever it's over <laughs> it's like whenever it's over then then i'll then i'll come back to it like how freaking full metal alchemist the, the first anime for Full Al uh, Full Metal Alchemist was completely fucking different than the actual <laughs> the actual manga because they were just like ah we gotta make something up real quick <laughs> like that was probably one of my favorite things and actually both of them still hold weight because of it well one of them holds weight because it's like literally the best thing ever made but you know the other one's okay in its own right but anyway yeah complete tangent but i absolutely hate stuff like that i just absolutely hate stuff like that 
Filler and slice life shit, I can't handle. Like, pfft, it's boring. It's just so boring. Just very, very, very boring. Anyway. And besides, it's still entertaining. For some reason, I just... Her face, I wasn't expecting her mouth to get that big, which is a really weird sentence to say, but I was not expecting it for some reason. But later on, there's all kinds of drama. Like, this is the only thing that Slice of Life relies on, is drama. Like, it's basically a soap opera. Slice of Life relies on soap opera tactics. And the only time I've ever legitimately sat down and watched a soap opera with any sort of interest whenever I was on an antidepressant that made me feel zero emotions. That was probably the, like, I had, I was invested in it because my brain had nothing else it wanted to do. So it was just like, I can sit down on a couch watching a soap opera because literally nothing else is interesting in the slightest. I couldn't even really sleep whenever I was on that medicine. It was a nightmare. But man, I watched a soap opera from almost its entire inception to completion, which was crazy. Like, I was invested in it, too. Like, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I was actually invested in something that my brain was just like, eh. But that's literally the only time I've actually cared about any sort of, like, drama. Like, when they... <laughs> sorry. Like, when they get into all their backstories and when some of the romance starts to happen, that's really what makes it so good. Like, she doesn't seem like the type that would be interested in something like that, but eh, whatever. There are so many touching parts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. Touching parts? I'm sure they're touching parts. Okay. I'll grow up eventually. Ah, is that so? It sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Maybe I underestimated you. <laughs> hey, wait! What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Natsuki g gives me a little shove. I just meant that I haven't seen you at your full power. Hmm, good save. Ah, this chapter seems like it's about baking. This is just a guess, but is there a lot of baking in this manga? Well, Natsuki pauses for a moment as if she doesn't want to admit something. Yeah! Why does that matter? Well, I mean, with the name Parfait Girls, I would assume it had something to do with food. It doesn't. I was just curious. Since you enjoy baking too, right? That's... Just a coincidence. It just happened to get... I just happened to get into baking around the same time that I got this manga. I actually am into baking as well. And I can't say that it was because of a manga though. So. Like, I would ever get into anything because it's in a manga. <sighs> I feel bad for anyone that impressionable. Oh. It always happens that way. <laughs> Definitely not a coincidence. I guess that explains Natsuki's interest in baking. Still, of all the hobbies to pick up from a manga, it that's definitely one of the better ones. Yeah. Not to mention, she's really good at it, so who am I to judge? Here we go, look at the cutie! Ah, I always love Natsuki's pictures. Her pictures are probably the cutest. Literally the cutest person in the, in the game. She is adorable. I love her so much. We read on for a few more minutes. I've finished a couple chapters at this point. Are you sure this isn't boring you? It's not. Even though you're just watching me read. Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I always get excited when I convince 
any of my friends to pick up a series I enjoy. You know what I mean? Hmm? Hmm? You don't? Um... That's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Uh, sorry. Hmm. Like I could ever get m my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. They can't even bring it up with... I can't even bring it up with... Without them being all like, Eh? You still haven't grown out of that yet? Makes me want to punch them in the face. Ugh, I know those kind of people. Honestly, it takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitated towards the other losers over time. But it's probably harder for someone like you. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? Okay. So, callback. So, earlier in the stream, if you were here, so we had italicized stuff in quotations. This is italicized, not in quotations. It is internal dialogue, but it is not quoted, and I... That's just a stylistic weirdness that I found. So that's why I was curious as to why that other one was, like, if it was said out loud or not. But this I know is internal because it doesn't have quotes. I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. At least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica was kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I just can't win, can I? Well, it paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am, reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe, but at least you're enjoying yourself, right? Uh, so? Haha. <laughs> Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flip the page. Suddenly, Natsuki starts laughing. <laughs> I totally forgot that happens. Natsuki puts her finger on one of the panels. Minori is my favorite character. You always feel a little bad for her since she's so unlucky. But it gets especially bad when... Uh, I shouldn't be talking about that yet. Just finish this chapter. Natsuki's voice sparkles with excitement. It's a stark contrast to her usual bossy tone. But she's not used to sharing her favorite manga with her friends. I can understand why. It's hard to express in words the feelings you get when connecting with someone like that. And being able to provide that to Natsuki for whom it's a rare experience, the thought makes me smile a little bit to myself. Okay, everyone! Are you all reading today? Are you all reading? Fuck. Are you all ready with today's poems? Oh, come on. Could your timing be any worse? Sorry. I just need to make sure we have enough time. Though you do look pretty cozy over there. <laughs> uh, uh. Natsuki suddenly notices how close she's gotten to me. She hastily slides herself a good 12 inches away from me. All right, guess I'll stop here for now. I close the book and hand it towards Natsuki. You're just giving it back? Don't you want to know what happens? Uh, yeah, but Monica just said... Don't be dumb. Just take it home with you. Uh, is that really all right? I say that mostly because I really didn't plan on using my spare time to read this. Well, of course. It would take forever to finish if you didn't take it home. Just finish that one before tomorrow so we can start the next one. 
And if it gets bent, I'll kill you! By tomorrow? I only got partway through the volume so far. I might fall behind on some shows if I try to get through this. But I suppose that's a necessary sacrifice in exchange for seeing Natsuki's enthusiastic face. Or am I more scared of what will happen if I don't finish it? Alright then. I stand up. I return to where I put my stuff and carefully sip the book into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write the poem last night? Uh, yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing! I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share it with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori's is on a... Okay. Skip! <laughs> Alright, we'll share with Sayori first. I'm most definitely comfortable with sharing it with Sayori first. She's my good friend, after all. This is a good poem, Shiro. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. Is that not good? Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? Okay, we will skip. I've already been through all this. So, if it has skip highlighted, I'm probably gonna skip it. Um, we'll just go ahead with your Natsuki first. See, like how Natsuki's doesn't have skip? That means this dialogue is completely new. Okay, well, let's get... Let's start with the things I don't like. First of all, um... Natsuki rereads my poem. N never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Uh, then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Ugh. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when writing this. I wanted to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said. Ugh. Well, I would be more comfortable sharing my poem if yours was really bad. You were supposed to show me some dumb poem and b make me go, Ha, well, it's not great, but let's me show you what real literature looks like. And you went and ruined it. I'm very animated whenever I do her, by the way. <laughs> I am extremely animated. Ah, I love not having a face cam because that's great for me. I absolutely hate it if you guys could see how animated I get. <laughs> I hope you're happy. So, in other words, you're saying you liked it. Er, Natsuki resort. <laughs> Natsuki <laughs> retort gets caught in her throat. Ooh, you're so... Ugh! You just... You you don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never actually said that. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Pretty sure you never actually said that. I say that mostly to myself. Natsuki must really hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or a loss that she liked my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Urgh, fine, I guess. Only because Monica will make me if I don't. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can see, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly. People can try, but that's about it. I've already read this, so. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I'm going to... Actually, for Natsuki, I'm going to continue to do this, even though it says skip. Because I know it's, you know, the same dialogue. But for Natsuki's route, it's not... I'm going to treat it as, you know, new. I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. 
Like in this poem, seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But, but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat. On, bleh, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more wind into it than I realize. Ha! That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? By the way, they are all over 18. Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Alright. So, show it to Yuri. So, Yuri's is also going to be new, because Yuri's going to quote on how uh, it's like Natsuki, basically. So, I will say this, like, as you've noted with the rest of Yuri's route, uh, Natsuki wouldn't even read our poems. Um, Yuri's about to pretty much do the same, because in Natsuki's route, Yuri is kind of, like, alienated. Hmm. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes, but more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, s sorry. I forgot to start speaking. Uh, um, it's fine. Don't force yourself. I am not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Er, yeah? Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after re after reading through it. Ah, so it's that bad. No. Did I just raise my voice? Ooh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her, ha her, her hair, her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I really didn't notice. What are you saying? What were you saying? Right, um, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. I don't know why that this just now lit up, but I'm gonna skip it. Just skip it. I know everybody's heartbroken because I'm skipping Yuri voice. But I just did a whole stream of Yuri voice. We can calm down with it. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Okay, so... Uh, in case point subject, the poem being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering her in her ass, remaining comfort to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought about it. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Makes me happy when you think of that. There we go. Just remember... Uh, just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm count- Ooh, I'm counting on you. Alright, who do I show my poem to next? Monica! Hi, Shiro. And as much as it breaks my heart, I'm skipping all of Monica's dialogue. I like it, Shiro. This is the only part that really matters. And I'm glad it stopped. I like it, Shiro. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no! It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So take that as a compliment. <laughs> or, <laughs> if you say so. Yep. There are a lot of poems or stories out there that are no more than a few simple, few simple words. They can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines long. They m might even feel like they're written for kids. But if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that. Sort of. Uh, maybe she's not an expert. But you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. 
It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. I want to finish it, but at the same time, skip. Ah, uh, skip. Just skip. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Um, yeah, never mind. We've read her poem already. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. That kind of style has gotten really popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When preformed. When preformed. I need to go to bed because I just read preformed. Sorry, I'm taking this moment to question my life choices. My brain. Preformed! That clearly does not say preformed. Oh my god. <sighs> Fucking Monica. To quote Doki Doki Literature Club. Fucking Monica. <laughs> When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had a, some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's coming from because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is like this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my right. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Whew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's why I ended up. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, yet Yuri smiles sadly. This I've seen before, so I don't know why it's not allowing me to skip it. There must be some sort of dialogue that's actually unique. Uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy? Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked somebody who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Shiro did too. So based on that, I'll glad you. <laughs> so based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come, un unless I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Shiro liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh! 
I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you... You're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Shiro appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... N no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh! Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who boobs ma <laughs> I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Shiro started showing up. N N Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned toward me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Sh Shiro, sh she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. And if she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force him to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Shiro. W wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. This... It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, but also a waste. You understand that, right, Shiro? Um, well? Um, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whomever I agree with will probably think more highly of me. So of course it's going to be. So... I'm pretty sure I went with Help Me, Sayori, and really there's no... I don't really remember what the difference is between these, and I really don't like it. I don't remember. Fuck, I really don't remember. Uh, We'll just side with Natsuki. Um, Yuri. You're really talented. Uh, well, but Natsuki has a point. We'll just go full Natsuki, because I don't remember if I did Yuri or not during this. I think that... I rack my brain in an attempt to back myself up. I think that conveying feelings with few words can be just as impressive as well. It lets the reader's imagination take over. And Natsuki's poem did a really good job at that. Yeah! I... It did, didn't it? Ahaha! <laughs> Shows how much you know. Th that's not... Natsuki, I think that's enough. Huh? Me? But she was so mean to me! Natsuki's voice whines. Look. What we talked about yesterday was right. Writing is a really personal thing, and sharing it can be can definitely be hard. It looks like we learned that today. Even small criticism can lead to something pretty heated. I glance over my shoulder. Sayori is nodding vig vigorously. Yeah, so I don't need to feel you don't need to feel threatened. You're a great writer, Natsuki. Ah Natsuki's voice gets caught in surprise. Thanks for noticing. She finally mutters that, barely audible. Yuri. Yuri looks at me dejectedly. With a face like that, I can't help but feel bad for her as well. I'm sure that Natsuki didn't mean every everything she said, so you don't need to feel threatened either. Well, if you say so. Hey! It's not like you need to apologize for me, Shiro. Sheesh. Natsuki takes a breath. I... The thing about... Oh. Natsuki glances around the room. Would everyone stop staring at me? Unsurprisingly, Natsuki has a harder time with it than she boasted. Sayori and Monica look away. Hmm. Anyway, 
The thing about your boobs, I didn't mean it, okay? That's all. Natsuki looks away, avoiding eye contact with anyone. Yeah! You're naturally beautiful, Yuri. S Sayori? Uh, I I I'll go make some tea. Eh? I was just trying to help. I'm sure she appreciated it, Sayori. I'm sure she appreciated it, Sayori. I think I said sure. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. Well, now that we're past that, everyone's read each other's poems, right? I hope this was worthwhile for everyone, especially you, Shiro. And to be honest, it's a nice change of pace from the lazing around we all got new we got a little used to, too used to, I hate her. It's a nice change of pace from the lazing around we got a little too used to. <laughs> uh, so my joining the club was responsible for ruining the atmosphere? No, not at all, not at all. There's still some time before we go home. So we'll all relax a little bit. Of course, besides chatting, we do literature related things in the club room. So maybe you can take the chance to pick up a book or do some writing. After all, that's what the club is for. I disagree, Monica. Huh? About what? That's not the most important thing about the literature club. The most important thing is having fun. <laughs> of course. Well, I guess that's why you're the vice president, Sayori. <laughs> In the end, though, Monica is right. In the beginning, the beginning in the in B. Oh my God, I definitely need to go to bed. <laughs> Being in the literature club probably means I can't spend all of my time doing nothing. But in the end, I guess it's been worth it so far. Okay, everyone, it's just about time for us to leave. How do you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, oops. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right, mostly. Shiro, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk to with, to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself... I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those who I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Shiro! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really see I'm not I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't you don't hate them, do you? Uh, no, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Shiro, it's nice that I got to spend some time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Huh. <sighs> It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometime. Like I said, grade A asshole. Okay, yeah, let's do this. All right, so, 
Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-do this so I know what's going to go on. So, bunny. Um, milk. Boop. Uh, do 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 Melody. Play. Fuck. Um. Pout. Sparkle. Fuck. Chocolate. Uh, cheeks. Candy. Um. Kawaii. Fun. Fuck. Pink. Um. Fluffy. Skirt? Okay. <laughs> um. Heart? No. Fuck. Strawberry. Sweet. Fuck. Um. Charm. No! Puppy! Okay. Alright. Alright. And I will save here. Um, we will save... So that's Yuri. This is Sayori. This one's Natsuki. So we're going to save here. Um, yeah, and then I will call it here for the night. Hoped everybody liked it. Who all stayed throughout the entire stream. It's been five hours.